Hello, and welcome to this Excel-based lesson on debt sizing. In this lesson, we are going to see how debt size is affected by the debt service cover ratio and interest rate. We will utilize these two formula that we learned in the previous lesson. The first formula says that the debt size is equal to CFADS divided by the DSCR, and the second formula says that the debt size is the present value of debt service discounted at the debt interest rate. We have our CFADs given as hard-coded numbers. The project will last for four years and our CFADs is 100 per year. We are also given the DSCR of four, which indicates that lenders think that this project is very risky. We will now calculate the first part of the first formula, which is CFADs divided by the DSCR in order to get to the debt service. Let's link to our hard-coded CFADs. Copy across and paste. Let's take the sum of the copied cells. So, the debt service is equal to the CFADs divided by the DSCR. Again, this is according to the debt sizing formula. So, equal, let's select our CFADs, then divide, and let's select the DSCR, and don't forget to anchor the DSCR, hit enter. Copy across and paste. Now we have to take the sum of the copied cells. Our total debt service for this project is 100. That means that total interest payments and principal repayments have to be equal to 100. We got the first part of the debt sizing formula. Now we have to subtract from the debt service the interest payments. In order to calculate the interest payment, we will need the debt opening balance. The debt opening balance is calculated in the debt balance calculation block. First, we will need the debt's initial balance. Let's use the sum of the debt service as debt initial balance for now. Let's enter 100 in cell G23. Then, the debt opening balance is always equal to the debt closing balance in the last period. Debt closing balance is equal to the opening balance less the principal repayments which is zero for now. Let's copy the balances across and paste. So, now we have the debt opening balance that we can use to calculate the debt interest payments. Let's link the debt opening balance to the one used in interest payment calculations. The interest payment is debt opening balance times the interest rate. And don't forget to anchor the interest rate. Now we have both ingredients to calculate the debt principal repayments, the debt service, and debt interest payment. To calculate the debt principal repayment, we will need to subtract from the debt service the interest payment. Let's link to the debt service and interest payments. And debt principal repayment is debt service less the interest payments. Let's take the sum of principal repayments. So we have our debt principal repayments. Let's now link the debt principal repayment from our calculations to the debt balance calculation block. We will use the min function to do that, which will give us the minimum of two numbers, the debt opening balance and debt principal repayment. The purpose of using the min function is to prevent debt balances from taking negative values. Don't worry if you're not familiar with the min function. We will review it later on in the course. So, the sum of the principal repayments is equal to 70, 
which means that this project can sustain the maximum debt size of 70. Let's now change the debt initial balance to the maximum sustainable debt size of 70. When we do that, our debt opening balance will change, our interest payment will go down, and the sum of principal repayments will go up. As you can see, the interest repayment has decreased and is now 16. It was 30 before when we had the initial debt balance as 100. As we predicted, the sum of the principal repayments went up because our interest payment went down, and now we have more cash to repay the debt. Since the sum of the principal repayment went up to 84, we have to change the debt initial balance to 84. Increasing the debt initial balance to 84 increased the interest payments to 24 from 16. The increase in interest payments decreased the sum of the principal repayments to 77. Following this logic, let's now change the debt initial balance to 77. You can see how the sum of the principal repayments is coming closer and closer to our debt initial balance, which is a hard coded number. So, we are moving towards a number. When we don't have to change the debt initial balance anymore, the number that will satisfy both the principal repayment calculations and debt balance calculations. And we reach that number, which is 79. This project can sustain a debt size of 79 with our given CFAS for four years, DSCR of four, and an interest rate of 10%. Let's link this max sustainable debt size to cell F25. Now, we will use the second formula, which says that debt size can be calculated by taking the present value of the debt services at a discount rate equal to the debt interest rate. Let's calculate the debt size using the NPV function in cell F26. So, NPV, the discount rate should be the debt interest rate. So let's select cell F17, anchor it, and for the values, let's select our debt service from year 1 to 4. And, as you can see, we are getting the same values for the debt size from our calculations and from using the NPV function. We can now link the initial debt balance to the debt size coming out from the NPV function, which will automate the debt sizing process. Let's assume that for whatever reason, the lenders reconsidered their opinion of the project riskiness and decided that the DSCR has to be 2 and not 4. Let's change the DSCR to 2 and sell F9. You can see that our debt size doubled from 79 in the previous case when we had the DSCR as 4. We can also change the interest rate to 1% to see how this will affect the debt size. Well, as expected, the debt size went up, although the debt size is less sensitive to the interest rate than the DSCR. So, we have seen how the project riskiness measured by the DSCR and interest rate determines the debt size for the project. The lower the risk, the lower the DSCR and interest rate, and the higher the debt size. In the last lesson, we briefly mentioned that debt tenor also affects the debt size. The longer the tenor, the higher the debt size is. Let's add one more year for our project and adjust the numbers accordingly to see what happens to the debt size. Our debt increased to 243 from 195. So, increasing the debt tenor increases the debt size because we have more cash flows to pay for the debt's interest and principal.